Hi everybody, welcome back to another Polymonger tutorial. Um, today we're going to look into the symmetry modifier and how that can help you uh, model and uh, also we'll look into how to display a modifier stack while working on the polygon object. So to start we have a character here. He is just a dog I worked on quite a few years ago for some commercials and uh, so you can see he's pretty much symmetrical. Most models they're generally symmetrical and then you'll break the symmetry later on down the line. So if I only want to work on one half of the model and have the object uh, mirror these results, I'll show you how to do that with the symmetry modifier. Also how to combine the object so you have left side and right side placed together without um, double vertices going down the line. And let's get started. So I will start by just deleting half of this polygon here, uh, half of the character I mean. And Sometimes it's harder to do than you think. So make sure you only have exactly half of the character. So if I use this dark line as my, my midway point, I can see that there's just a few polygons heading over. Okay. So I have half a character here. And that would be the side that I would then do my modeling tweaks on. Uh, if I have the character selected and I go over to the modifier list, just bring the drop down and scroll down to the one marked symmetry. So that's right here, symmetry. And I click it. So now you can see that there's two sides to the model. The left side that we started with as well as the character's right side. And that's great. That's exactly what I want from the symmetry model. If you click down the stack all of a sudden you can see that half of the model disappears. And that happens just with the way 3D Studio Max works and with a modifier stack. So to see everything above the edit poly up the stack, you click this little test tube looking icon here and it says show end result on slash off toggle. So I click that and now all the modifiers applied to the object are displayed at, at the same time. So that's quite handy. So if I were to go in and start editing the model now, you'll see that it will reflect on the other side. So if I start moving vertices around here, it's mirroring it to the other side of the character. So say I decide that maybe these points here are just a little too close together. You can see how it all mirrors over. And so you just work on your character that way. Um, you can also see though, if I can zoom in here correctly, that there is some pinching going on. Let me fix my viewport real here. Viewport clipping. Change that. There we go. So you can see how it's pinching in in an unwanted way. I would want that line to continue all the way down and keep these quads going nice and across the geometry. And right now this is happening because of the symmetry modifier. So if I go into my options here and I look at my threshold, this number pretty much decides how far the distance is before it starts to try to merge the vertices together from one side to the other. So at the 2.5, oh, sorry, 0.254 centimeters, it's too big of a number, and so it's starting to grab vertices and crunch them together like this. So you can just play off this setting here until you start seeing the the quads come back the way you want it. Now you don't want it at zero zero, so just a click up if all the vertices are very tight, and that'll weld it together. And also you see here that the the weld seams are checked on. That's that's another thing that you want. Uh, so if you open up the symmetry modifier here, you'll see the only sub object is a mirror. And if I click that, I'll just go to my top down here, you'll see the mirror gizmo. And what that's doing is it's showing right where the flip from the left side to the right side of the character happens. And this is determined by your um, the geometry's center origin. But you can also go in and manually change the mirror as well. So if you wanted it further apart, you can move it, or if you want it further to the other side, you can move it. And you can see that the, the vertices kind of snap together. And again, that's being determined by that threshold setting here. And for this character, I just want it straight down the, uh, the axis here. Okay, so now we have a character with the symmetry on, and the vertices are not getting crunched. And we made our tweaks to one side that we then mirrored over to the other side. So everything is working as as we would like. But now if we would want the symmetry modifier to become permanent so that we can move on or especially if you're working in games and things like that you can't really have 
a modifier stack on your objects. You can get away with it a little more film than games. But to go ahead and close the stack down onto your poly object here, you can just right click and you can do collapse 2 which will just collapse it down once or you can collapse all which will collapse everything. In this case either one would would work just fine so let's go ahead and click collapse 2 and now you can see that there's no more symmetry modifier and that um, the character is just one object. So if I go ahead and select here I'm only grabbing one vertice. There aren't two vertices on top of each other. That's what that weld checkbox did. It welded the two vertices from the left side and the right side together as one and when we modify, it did the uh, collapse 2 on the stack, it crunched it all together so now we have this one continuous mesh as intended. So I uh, hope you learned something here. It's a very useful and powerful tool for modeling and I use it pretty much on everything I make. Um, if you have comments, suggestions, or if you just want to be nice and like my video, that'd be great. So go ahead, like, subscribe, leave comments, send me messages for videos you would like to see or just questions you might have, and I'll get back to you. Bye.